Hello, I'm at Super Judge and I'm so blessed of God to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, after the broadcast on the first of this month, this is the beginning of our daily broadcast. Praise God. I know I've been receiving messages. You know, when, when what's happening, I told you, the Lord said we should hold on throughout the month of January. And now the Lord has said we should continue. Praise God. Now, you know, like we do it on this broadcast every day, before we go into God's word, we would like to make requests for our daily bread. I'll tell you something about working with God. Consistency does it. You've got to be consistent. You can't just do something once, and that's what happens to a lot of people. Oh, God told me to do this. They do it once, twice, three times, and then they stop. Because sometimes you're thinking, oh, because God, I, I had a revelation. God told me, God came into my bedroom and he says, start doing this. And then you think when you do the first two, three times, you'll see some mega result. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It's in your consistent obedience that keep you safe. Praise God. Yeah, it's in your consistent obedience that you are kept safe. So when the Lord says, on this broadcast, we should make requests for our daily bread. We will do it. And you can just be thinking, oh, um, join us. Join us every day. Praise God. Are you ready now? With faith in your heart, say these words with me. Say, Father, I make requests for my daily bread today. And I receive it from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Especially at times like these, you must learn to look up to God for your supply. David asked the question, Will I look up to the hills? From whence come my help? Then he says, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven, and the earth, praise God. My help doesn't come from the hills. My help doesn't come from anywhere else but from the Lord. So if your help comes from the Lord, then you must know how to relate with the Lord for your help, praise God. Now the Lord have told us great things about this month of February. And listen, the Lord said this month, we, he is going to, we are going to be revealing the glory of Jesus. The glory of Jesus. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you about. And turn your Bibles with me to John chapter 17 and verse 22. John 17 and verse 22. Jesus speaking here. He said, And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them. Now Jesus was talking to his father. He was reporting to his father. See, and he, he, he was saying these words. Now, if you, if you look from verse 21, it says, That they all may be one as thou, Father, art it, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Then he goes on to say, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have giving them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That they may be one, even as we are one. Now think about this. You know, many times we read the Bible, we do not take time to um, question ourselves on why or the meaning of what is being said. Now, this is why it's important to note that this was a conversation between Jesus and God. Jesus was reporting to God. And, and you know, the, the way a lot of people read the Bible, they blind their eyes when they read the Bible. So they just feel that I'm just taking words. I'm just taking words. No, if you don't understand the words you're taking, it will make no meaning to you. See, it will make no meaning to you. 
So Jesus was speaking here and he says, the glory that you gave me, I have given them. So it raises a question in your heart. What is the glory? What is the glory that God gave to Jesus? And how come he was willing to give out that glory to us? What is this glory? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because if you don't understand this, you will know how to function in that glory. You will know how to walk in that glory. You will know how to enjoy that glory. Now, when you hear the word glory, you just think of a good thing, right? You just think, oh, it must be something good. Glory, praise God. So now, Jesus saying to the Father, the glory that you gave me, I have given them. And she says, so that they will be one. Now, I know most times when we talk about unity in the body of Christ, this is the scripture that we quote. Jesus prayed and said that they may be one. Yes, that's what we think. But he, he wasn't speaking about us being one, like together, you know, we should be united. No, sir. He is, when he says that they may be one, he was referring to that they may join in our oneness. That they may join in our oneness. Oh, Lee man. You see, there's a lot I can talk to you about this, concerning, uh, concerning this about. Now, he says, I and the Father are one. You remember Jesus said that the Jews wanted to stone him. They wanted to stone him. How can you dare make yourself equal with God? Because they understood what he meant. He didn't say, I and the Father, we are together. You know, you know like he said, this is my party, we are one. So we, 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 we do things together. We, no, he's not talking about us agreeing that, okay, we're going to walk together now and we're going to be friends. No. He says, that they may be one even as we are one question is how are they one if you don't understand how they are one you will never understand how he desired that we be one with them you will never understand it he is not saying you know um, you belong to this denomination. You, this other friend belongs to that denomination. He said, you know what? See, we, we understand oneness. We understand unity in the body. So we don't fight ourselves. We, we may not worship the same way. But you know, when we meet, we don't let those things divide us. No, sir. That's not what he was talking about. It's deeper than that. And when you understand this, you won't bother talking about unity. Because the unity will be, will be straight. Yeah. Praise God. Jesus never bothered about whether he and the Father are in unity. He never bothered about that. You know why? Because they were. They were. How were they in unity? Now that's the right question. Praise God. See, they were one. Because they both functioned and obeyed. Yes, you heard me. Praise God. The same Spirit. The thing that made Jesus and God one is because they both functioned by the same Spirit. Now, you will not understand this until you understand who the Holy Spirit is. God the Father depends on the Holy Spirit. Jesus came and he depended on the Holy Spirit. It's now Jesus saying to the Father, that glory you gave to me, I release it to them. And that glory is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the glory of the Father. Oh, the glory is the, the Holy Spirit is the glory of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the glory of the Son. Hey, so when Jesus said, The glory you gave me, I have given to them. 
No wonder Paul came and said, there is this mystery that I've been hidden from, from the foundation of the world. Think about it. And he says, now God have chosen me to reveal this mystery. And he says, what is the mystery? The mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, Jesus said, the glory I, you gave me, Lord, I have given them. And Paul says, the glory is this, the, 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 this mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, actually, when Paul says the hope of glory, he was referring to it as, if you put this to work, there's going to be glory in your life. So he says the hope of glory. But the real truth is, because of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are qualified to walk in glory. The same way Jesus walked in glory. Jesus walked in glory because of the Holy Spirit. The Father dwells in glory because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the glory of the Father. The Father doesn't leave his throne. And when I say the Father doesn't leave his throne, don't think the Father sits on the throne like an old man sitting there crossing his, crossing his legs and people go there and they see this old man sitting on one throne and say, oh, my children. No, sir. I, I always say this to people. I said, um, when you get to the throne of God, you won't see nothing. You won't see nothing. You won't see a chair. You know, it's a throne, throne. You want to wait with the earthly king, kingship, you know, and, and how they have one chair as their throne. No, sir, that's not how the heaven is, praise God. There is no throne anywhere. There is no chair anywhere. The throne of God is a place of light. And, and, and what comes out of that light is And what comes out of that light is voice, words. If you are thinking there's one thing you go and bow down to, no, sir. No, you'll be disappointed. It's light. So, but, but the Bible said the angels worship before the throne. Do you know what they worship? The words, the glory of God is what they respond in worship to. And that glory is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And that glory is always new, always new, always fresh. The Father cannot function outside the Holy Spirit. He cannot. Jesus never functioned outside of the Holy Spirit. And today, what makes you think your life will be great and you can function outside the Holy Spirit? You know what we do most times? We, we, we come to Him or we put Him to work. Now, when we say put Him to work, it's not really Him who actually put to work. It's the power or the anointing that He carries that we love to put to work. But here's the point. He lives in us today. If you are born again, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Now, He doesn't just want to exist in us. He wants to manifest as He is the glory of the Father in and through us. But here is what we must learn to do. And that's why I'm teaching you what I'm teaching. Oh, I'm going to get into depths and practicals concerning these teachings. So you will understand and begin to walk in the glory of Jesus. That's what he wants. What's the point giving you the glory when you will not walk in the glory? What's the point going around saying, I carry the glory of God when nobody sees that glory in your life? How do I activate this glory? These are the things we're going to be talking about. Hey, hear me. The glory that Jesus left or gave to us, which he received from the Father, is the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit brings us into oneness with God and oneness with Jesus. How does he do, do that? 
that is there is no way the holy spirit was going to tell jesus anything different from what he had told the father there is no way the father is going to say because the father speaks through the holy spirit there is no way the father is going to say one thing and jesus will hear another thing now it's the same thing today the holy spirit dwelling in us there is no way he's going to say something different from what the father have said and from what jesus have said so you see where the oneness come in from so if i begin to listen to the holy spirit today i actually have come into oneness with jesus and the father because what i'm listening to is the same thing the father said is the same thing jesus said now now hear me and i, I pray you understand this even if i could lepra we've had these situations where people who can never read and write but they are filled with the holy ghost they speak words and you check out their words their words agree in truth with everything jesus said and stood for so it's not like they read the bible and say and they are quoting john or matthew or mark or luke or, or the words written in red no they didn't read the bible they cannot read the bible because they are uneducated they cannot read your english bible you understand what i'm talking about neither can they read the bible in their dialect but because of the holy spirit in them they begin to speak as the spirit gives them utterance and when they speak their words will conform to everything jesus have said their words will conform to everything the father have said now you will despise and say what do you know you that didn't go to school no he didn't need your kind of education all he needs is to be filled with the holy ghost and he will begin to speak truth and you see that truth that he is speaking will beat you hands down with your phd degree oh i'm telling you the truth <laughs> it's good. that's 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 a reality is the same reason the disciples of Jesus the 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 Pharisees and the scribe they looked at them and said how come these men know so much letters being that they didn't go to school then they took notice of them that they have been with Jesus no it wasn't Jesus that taught them how to speak or how to preach no it was the holy spirit walking in them at that time that was saying through them the same thing he was saying through jesus praise god so they heard jesus speak by the holy ghost i said wow how come this guy knows so much knowledge they heard the disciples speaking by the holy ghost they said wow how come these men know so much have not gone to school brothers and sisters it doesn't matter where you are there is this thing that matters the most that we all come into oneness with the father and oneness with Jesus and that's what the father is interested in from all his children going forward this month you know why because the end is near i'll say that again the father is interested in this thing i'm sharing with you now because the end is near and I sense in my spirit, beginning from this month, the Lord's going to be doing a kind of gathering. He's going to be gathering His children together. I'm not saying physically gather them under one roof, but everyone who belongs to God will be receiving that call to fellowship. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's going to be a move of the Spirit that will shake this whole earth. The Lord will shake the heavens. He will shake this earth one more time and you will see the glory of god like never before praise god my time is up <laughs> oh glory to jesus thank you holy spirit we open our hearts to receive your truth and to walk in the glory just like you have planned it from the beginning let your word sweep through this earth and fill the hearts of every believer in the name of the lord jesus christ amen god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye